Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fusion 360 for FTC series. This is the 22nd video in the series and if you haven't watched the previous 21 videos I recommend you do so by clicking on the card in the corner. It's been a while, this is, um, I've been working on, I've been competing in the Valor CAD challenge with a teammate of mine over the past week or so um, and so I've been spending uh, all of my time doing that as you need most of your time in your day to work on work on the CAD. Um, so uh, this is the last planned video in the series. Um, in the future I'll be doing more one-off videos on tools that I use a lot and that are really useful that I didn't cover uh, or I didn't cover in too much depth. Um, but for now this is the last planned video. So today we're going to be talking about how to manage large assemblies. By large assemblies I mean full robot assemblies with uh, details and all the components in them um, and how to reduce lag in those assemblies so that you can work with them faster and more effectively to make changes. Um, so this is our VCC robot that my teammate and I made um, and this robot has over 900 components total with all the screws catted and um, lots of threaded parts catted uh, this would be very laggy if we just simply made it in all in one assembly um, and we jointed everything everything's jointed properly um, if we did that all in one assembly it would become hard to work with very quickly um, so we're going to talk today about how do how do we reduce um, our lag and how do we make this much easier to make changes to and work with um, so this right here that we're looking at right now is the, the main assembly. And if you look at our browser on the left here, um, we really only have a few objects here. Um, we, have, we have this, which I just added afterwards. Um, this is not important. But um, we have our, our intake here. This is the full intake assembly. Our elevator assembly and our, our drivetrain assembly. So we have three big assemblies here and then we have um, some bodies that were converted to components inside this main assembly because it needed to reference some of the other assemblies to be made. And that was just a quick and easy way to do it. Um, but, so let's talk about how, how what, what did we do here? So our three main assemblies here are, are the three big parts of our robot, our drivetrain, our elevator, and our intake. Those are the three parts of our robot. Um, on a Skystone robot, for example, you might have drivetrain, intake, elevator, and outtake if you had four bar or um, horizontal slides or whatever. Um, so that's, that's like four main assemblies. Usually it's good to try to keep that number no more than five or six assemblies in the main one um, as you really just want it to be the biggest parts of your robot. Um, so now if we went ahead and we looked at the elevator assembly, let's say, um, so we can see the elevator assembly right here. Um, th this is what I would call a sub-assembly. Um, and this has, this has lo a lot more uh, components, that, if you'd notice, than, than uh, our main one does. So it has all the components of, of the elevator and all the screws. Um, so this one is probably going to be significantly laggier to work with than the main, but that's what we want. We want to reduce the lag in the main and sort of spread it out as much as we can. Um, so uh, if we look at the main, if we look at the sub-assembly here, it's not just every component um, is inserted into this one as well. For example, if we, we looked at the, this uh, assembly here. It's another sub-assembly inside this one called four stage slides. What this has is this has um, our, our four stages of sliders. It has the joints in them. Um, it has the, the screws, the pulleys, and the nuts on the other side with the, the slider inserts. Um, so this is another way that you can that's really good to reduce lag within your sub-assemblies is to break that down into even more sub-assemblies. Um, so that, that, that's one example that we used here. If we look at the intake, um, you can see that th these, these wheels here that I have um, are not actually, I didn't insert them individually and make these stacks every single time. 
um, with the 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 plastic spacer in between and the pulley on top um, and the the thunder hex going through uh, what I did is if um, we can click on this and find where it's located in the drop down and um, if we open this um, what you would see is that this is actually another sub assembly um, with the joints here it's all rigid jointed together um, and then revolute jointed around the bearing and the intake um, so this is another example of how uh, of how we split it up into even smaller assemblies. Um, so this is the it's the general idea. There's nothing really too complicated um, about how how do you reduce lag. I mean, there's a lot of um, theory about the timeline and stuff, um, which gets very complicated. Um, which I encourage you to look into it because it'll help you CAD faster in Fusion 360. Um, but really the idea is have your main assembly be just a few large assemblies that are jointed together. That makes the jointing very easy. It's just going to be a rigid joint probably of just uh, your few large assemblies. You don't need um, hundreds of hundreds of joints in the main assembly. And you just have a few components here. And then inside those main sub-assemblies like the elevator, you try to break that down even smaller. Um, so, for example, another way that we could have broken this down is um, maybe we could have canted this whole gearbox here um, as another sub-assembly, and that would have just been inserted into this. That would have helped. Um, it's just these small things that allow you to, to break down your assemblies into smaller pieces. It makes it much easier to work with. Um, another advantage of breaking it down into to smaller assemblies when you when something is repeated such as these we have two sets of these these four stage sliders um, or we have lots of sets of these these um, double pulley intake assemblies um, if I wanted to change this let's say um, if I was to go ahead and open the uh, one of the double assemblies and I want to to change this to nine millimeter belts instead of six millimeter wide belts um, I could very easily do that um, by just opening up this pulley, just like this. Again, this is a, a component inside the assembly. This is made in a, another file. It's a body in its file. Um, and if I change this so it, it was taller, um, then this would update properly. So now we ha we would have the the properly updated assembly, and then all um, all. 10 or, or whatever uh, six six doubles in this in this assembly would also update together and you wouldn't have to worry about going ahead and replacing every single one um, rejointing it whatever um, so this is a very easy way to just keep things simple keep the lag down and make things easier to work with within fusion 360 and I highly recommend if you're catting a full robot um, like this. Um, it's very important to keep the lag down. I highly recommend you use this system with the the few um, four or five main sub-assemblies and then within that you have smaller sub-assemblies where you can. Um, so I hope you learned something in this video and hopefully I'll see you in a future video where I go over some of my favorite tools in Fusion 360 and how to use them.